You are listening to Mind Pump, the world's top fitness, health, and entertainment podcast. Now, in this episode, we answer fitness and health questions that are asked by our audience, viewers like you, um, and listeners. Uh, but the way we open the episode is with an introductory portion where we talk about current events. Sometimes we mention our sponsors. A special event this time, eh, Sal? Good stuff. So I'm going to give you a breakdown of this entire episode. By the way, the intro was 38 minutes long. So we open up by announcing the arrival of my baby boy, Aurelius Jordan Stefano was born uh, on the 3rd. Dun, dun, dun. Yeah, so we talk all about that whole thing that happened at the hospital and how my wife is such a champion and how great it is to be a father again. Yeah. Uh, then I talk about how uh, Organifi protein powder saved my life in the hospital because hospital food is disgusting. Terrible. So I was able to have their protein powder. By the way, Organifi makes uh, amazing plant-based organic supplements. One of them is a plant-based protein powder, but they make many, many other products. We love them. They have good stuff. And because you listen to Mind Pump, you get a discount. This is how you get the discount. Go to Organifi.com forward slash Mind Pump. So that's Organifi, O-R-G-A-N-I-F-I, and then .com forward slash Mind Pump. Use the code Mind Pump for 20% off. Then Justin and Adam talk about their adventures uh, up in the Tahoe area. Uh, Justin tell, takes, tells a great story about the guilt he felt for breaking a promise to oh, his son. Oh, man, that's the worst. What a jerk. And then Adam talks about his eye scare using Felix Gray blue light blocking glasses. Uh, you have to listen to the episode to find out what happened to his poor eyes. By the way, Felix Gray makes blue light blocking glasses that doesn't change the color of the world around you. So it blocks blue light. So you can use them at night when you're on electronics and get good sleep or use them during the day so you don't get eye strain. Um, go check them out. They're the best blue light blocking glasses you'll find anywhere, and they look the best. They're also stylish. Go to felixgrayglasses.com. That's F-E-L-I-X-G-R-A-Y glasses.com forward slash mind pump. So after the intro, we get into the fitness questions. Here's the first one. This first person says they want to know if we can break down how to analyze a physique with terms like origins, insertions, muscle bellies, et cetera, in the competitive sports of bodybuilding, physique, bikini, those terms are thrown around a lot. So we talk about what that means. Like, what does it mean when we talk about muscle insertions, muscle bellies? What does it mean when you have good genetics in terms of your aesthetics? The next question, this person wants to know what our favorite uh, exercises and movements in the sagittal and transverse planes are. Okay, so sagittal transverse planes. That means exercises that happen in front of you. And then ones happen to the sides of you or ones that happen when you twist. So we go through all the different planes of movement and why you should pick exercises in all three of them. Uh, the next question, this person says, what's the best advice I can give to my sister who just recently found out she's diabetic? And then the final question, this person says, look, let's just imagine you get on the Joe Rogan podcast. What are the top three messages you try to send to his massive audience. Ooh. Also, because we're in November holiday season, um, we are running a massive, massive promotion. So here's what we did. We took our most effective at-home workout programs. So we have MAPS Anywhere and MAPS Suspension. So MAPS Anywhere utilizes resistance bands and a broomstick. MAPS Suspension uses just a suspension trainer. And you train your entire body. You build muscle, you burn body fat. You get phenomenal results. It's a great no gym required uh, program combination. So we take both programs. We discount them massively, but there's more. Then we threw in our MAPS HIT program. HIT, by the way, stands for High Intensity Interval Training. So three programs, all can be done at home. MAPS HIT is a great calorie burning, fat burning program. Now, normally, if you got all three programs, the retail is $291 for lifetime access. Well, right now, the holiday promotion is $99.99. That's it. One-time fee, and you get all three programs, lifetime access. Here's how you can sign up. Go to mapsnovember.com. So that's maps, M-A-P-S, november.com. How do you feel, dude? Are you, uh, you know, I, by the first of all, so the audience doesn't know this. Like you didn't tell us uh, one, you you chose not to uh, uh, know what the sex was until uh, he was born. That's you right. Also, didn't share with us the name that you were going yep. to choose. So when you sent over, not only you had a boy, but you also named him Aurelius Jordan. I was just like, oh, bro. Yeah, I know. Yeah, little boy. <laughs> so oh. that's. Oh. Yeah, I, I mean, I would have been happy either way, right, boy or girl. Yeah. But you know, he came out, and you know, you see the. 
the package. So you're yeah. like, <laughs> it's a sun. Uh, yeah, Aurelius. Uh, we love the name. It's um, you know after the Marcus Aurelius. The, they call him the last great Roman emperor, the Stoic philosopher. Mm-hmm. Great quotes. You can look him up online and see some of the quotes that he he put out there. Um, and uh, Jordan, because his nickname is, is going to be AJ. I love that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So like her Jessica's brother is AJ. So we wanted an AJ, and we we're thinking oh, of good cool. names for the middle name. And you guys know I'm a huge Some basketball fan. Thing. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so I thought, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> AJ. Nobody believes that. Yeah, dude. But yeah, man, I'm I'm Bro, like on what a roller coaster, dude. For you it guys. was it was oh intense, dude. It was intense. Um, so we we planned on a home birth. There's a few few reasons for that. I mean, I talked about it on the show a little bit, but. You know, home birth. You know, if mom's healthy and everything. It's a, it's a, it's a different experience. Um, midwives are are experts at uh, you know vaginal delivery, natural delivery. Um, Jessica was healthy, fit, um, and we wanted that experience. And then there's another side to it that I haven't really shared on the podcast. You know, Jessica's had some pretty bad experiences in hospitals. Um, you know, when she was a kid, she had. Uh, severe migraines. They didn't know what caused them. So when she was like a baby and a kid, they would, you know, tape her head to the to the CT scan board or whatever and oh, put her no through. Shit. Oh my god! So oh, she just never traumatic. Told yeah, she hates yeah. hospitals. And then when she was twelve, her mom uh, had her in the delivery room when she was delivering her younger brother. Um, she's, she's the 12, 12 year age difference between her and her younger brother, mm-hmm. and it, it was really bad. I mean, her mom passed out several times. Uh, in the delivery, lost a lot of blood. So she just was just traumatized with hospitals. Did wow. not want to go. So, you know, so we want to do home birth for that reason, but all the other reasons that, you know, I said. So mm-hmm. that was the plan. We had a great midwife, Melissa Dean, uh, give her a shout out. Just excellent, excellent care leading up to the due date. But, you know, she she missed the due date and the law says that you can't go so that's an past actual, 42 weeks. So that's mm. an actual law. It is. Oh, wow. Now, yeah. is that a state law or is that- I don't know. It might be a state or I don't know. I think it might be a state law, but oh. they don't allow midwives to deliver babies at home past 42 weeks. Now, what what was that feeling like for both you and Jessica? Yeah. That, because you guys put so much energy and effort in to set that up. Like, right. how did- There had to be some disappointment there on some level. It, you know, my wife, she's a champion. My wife's a champion. You know, go, once you hit that due date and then you know, that, oh, there's a time frame- <laughs> So we're doing all the stuff, and you know, I talked about it on the podcast, and right. trying to get it to happen. Natural and methods, the um, castor oil and stuff. Ca- ca- castor. castor. <laughs> <laughs> really Race car. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That'll get it glided out. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe that's why it didn't happen. You guys yeah. used the wrong oil. We did the wrong yeah. one. Yeah. Used the wrong. Like a slip and slide. You should have used the, we did the, mobile one. the 30, the 30, 40 WD, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, so, yeah. No, so, High octane. Yeah, so no, we're doing all the stuff, and she's being active and everything, but everything looks good and healthy, and- you know, we did the. She did the enema a few days before. That didn't work. Uh, the castor oil. They save that towards the end um, because what you don't want to happen with because ca- castor oil is a, a, a laxative, and what you don't want to happen is that you get dehydrated. Sometimes women can vomit. Not a good uh, way to go into natural childbirth. Right. So they always wait to last minute. But you know, we were up to the last minute. So she did the castor oil uh, once. Didn't work. Did it again the day before the last day. And it started to work. Oh, so wow. she starts going into early labor the last day, like that morning, right? Oh. So she's feeling some contractions, but they're sporadic. They're not consistent. And meanwhile, we're trying to stay calm because you don't want to get you know, stressed or mm-hmm. anxious because that can prevent things from progressing. Right. Mm-hmm. And um, just it just you know didn't happen. Mm. Um, she was in this kind of early labor. So we knew we had to go to the hospital. Mm-hmm. And Jessica's just like, is the midwife with you guys the whole time right now? No, the midwife so doesn't just show talk, up. She's just talking to you until it's game time. So right? we had a doula, Carrie. I want to get her last name because when I tell you guys about this doula, I mean she's just she Carrie Castle. So if you're in the San Jose area, phenomenal doula, and I'll t- you'll you'll know more as I tell the story. But what what'll typically happen is you'll do early labor at home. Once the contractions get like five minutes apart and they start to get a little intense. Then the doula shows up. Then the doula is the one that makes the decision to uh, call the midwife. And the midwife comes to deliver the baby, essentially. Okay. So that's kind of the process of what's what, you know what goes on. So she's in early labor. So doula's not coming. But we're texting back and forth. She's in contact with us. We missed the, the deadline. So we're like, okay, let's 
you know, let's wait during this day, the next day, and then if nothing happens, we'll go in uh, at night uh, to to get induced. Now, how do they? Okay, sorry to stop you, but I'm no curious. Right? How do you? How do you? Um, how do they control like? You, uh, the, if the law, if you 14 days or 15, like what, what, what stopped you guys from like, let's just stay here and push it two more days or whatever? We can. The problem is then the midwife can't come and help with the delivery. Uh, so you essentially then would be legally, home, right? Yeah. You yeah. would be home birth at, uh, by yourself. Oh, uh, wow. So she's held responsible to come deliver a yeah. baby beyond four. So just, we wouldn't have anybody uh, supporting us. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah, so, okay. and you know, believe it or not, there's women that take that risk. Well, I, I, be- I wouldn't I bet. do that. I bet. They I mean, call that- it free birth. I would not <laughs> recommend. It's like a Leonard Skinner song. <laughs> <laughs> Free birds. Light your lighter. Yeah. yeah. So, and nah, I wouldn't recommend that, you uh, know, uh, but not. whatever. So, uh, so, but it is, it's up to us. But we thought, you know, all the, all the risks and, you know, and all that. And so we're like, let's not go. Not worth it. Not worth it. Let's go get induced. So we go to the hospital at night. Uh, we check in and uh, El Camino Hospital in, in Los Gatos. Great staff. The nurses are phenomenal. And we're there, and we're checking in, and you know, Jessica's already upset. She's like, "Damn it, you know, I didn't mm, make it." And mm. She's got to battle that whole, you know, why didn't my body do this? And mm. you know, this arbitrary timeline—that's another thing, because you know that they design this timeline, and there are increased risks, but it's a general risk. Right, it's just a guideline. It's not on an individual basis. I mean, Jessica's healthy; she's relatively young. Um, so, you know, you're kind of fighting that plus then you're thinking, uh, but I want the baby to be safe because now you can, you know, you're considering everything. Yeah. So we're there, we're there at night doctor, you know, comes in and he's like, yeah, I'm not going to induce you because you're, you we're going to wait till tomorrow morning. And so I'm like, what are we going to do? Stay in this hospital till tomorrow morning. Yeah. Uh, if you're not going to induce us, we're going to leave. That's why I told you guys. Hey guys, long story. We're not. We're not yeah, you're all of a sudden home again. Yeah. yeah. So the doctor tells us that. So I'm like, so I said to him, I said, well, why am I here? And you could see that he's trying to, you know, switch. Well, I, I, don't, I recommend you stay. So that I'm like, no, we'll come back tomorrow. I said, unless she gets into active labor, um, then, uh, yeah. then, then, you know, we'll just wait till tomorrow because I'm not going to have. We're not going to stay in this hospital. Have. Her hooked up to machines, watching the the heartbeat of every of her or the yeah, baby, creating more anxiety. Oh, yeah. yeah, so we we went home, and um, you know she was in this early kind of sporadic, you know, one contraction would happen, and then thirty minutes later another one would okay, happen. Okay, they weren't even in within five minutes. No, apart, right? and, and, and when nothing would happen for five hours, and then oh, she'd wow. get a couple more. Hmm. So that happened until the next morning, and then we're like, okay, now we got to go, and let's go see what happens. So we show up at, uh, at the hospital, 10 a.m., um, and uh, great again, great staff there, by the way. They, they knew our situation. The, the nurses are like, we'll let you guys try to create whatever environment you want. Uh, oh, that's the, nice. Yeah, so we had candles. Wow, they were like that, huh? They were. So we had candles. We turned the light. Because, you know, hospitals are like bright-ass oh, lights. Super sterile environment. Sterile yeah. machines everywhere. Yeah. It's like you're just going to make, you know, my wife more anxious about this anyway. So lit the candles, put on the music, and we waited a little bit. And the like, you know, doctor comes and is like, okay, we're going to do this very slow. We're going to do a very slow induction. I'm not going to give you Pitocin unless I think you need it. We're going to start with, there's something called Cytotec, which is a a synthetic prostaglandin. You take that orally and it can kickstart labor itself. Did you know about this before going in or did they, okay, you did. I knew that, I wanted to know what the doctor's recommendations were. And they knew that we wanted a home birth. They knew that we wanted minimal intervention. Um, so she was cool with it. She's like, we'll monitor you and we'll go really, really slow. So we go cool. on the cytotech and we wait, wait, wait. Uh, I don't know how many hours later, it was like 15 hours later or whatever. They give her a couple doses of that and then it does, it kicks in to labor. So now I call the, the doula. So Carrie shows up and oh uh, they let her be there they let her come in yeah. oh wow i know right during yeah. covid a lot of hospitals yeah are. yeah i thought maybe it was just gonna be you no yeah. carrie went uh, a couple days before and got like a fast 24-hour uh test. covid test oh perfect and they were cool with it oh which, cool yeah i'm very thankful for that so carrie shows up now here's the thing with side attack uh it can also cause contractions to be stronger and faster so typically with natural childbirth, you have, a, you have a little bit more time in between contractions and they're not as intense. Every time you add an intervention, whether it's, you know, like the Cytotec, which I think the, the generic name is misopropyl or something like that, or Pitocin especially, 
contractions can be stronger. So now Jessica's get, she's kicking into active labor, but it's intense. Uh-huh. It's getting really intense. So doula comes there and we are, we're doing it. We're going through it. You know, we're, you know, it, and it's, you know, watching Jessica, it's like, I tell you, man, it's hard not to get emotional. Her, her strength going through, knowing that she's going through this more intensely than within, it probably would have been had it not been mm-hmm. induced. Mm-hmm. Um, and it, it's just, it's, it's crazy to watch. And then there was like this switch with her. Like she's, it, there was, it was six hours of this, this labor. Ooh. And it was like mm. a minute in between mm. contractions sometimes, sometimes two back to back where she's like losing her breath and doing her thing. Then she had this switch and she went into this space and she's like breathing and I'm hanging on to her. And she's kind of hanging on my body. Carrie, I mean, Je- Je- this is the funny thing. Oh yeah, how did you guys? How were you uh, positioned? Was she standing? Was she kneeling? How did you guys? Everything. <laughs> you know, it's what's funny is Jessica's very modest, so she doesn't like to be naked in front of uh, other people. She doesn't want people around her when she's naked or whatever. And she was worried about this. She's like, "How am I going to be like?" To- once you get into labor, all that <laughs> she don't shit. give a shit. Fucking, oh, dude. Yeah, <laughs> Up the window, no, dude. Yeah. She's buck naked. She's on all this fours. Pain. <laughs> get this pain yeah. away. Midwife yeah. is behind her, squeezing her hips. You know, oh, so she's yeah. got the whole view. You know yeah, what I'm? Sure. I'm rubbing her and holding her, and you know, we're going in the shower. We're doing the whole thing, <clears throat> and they checked her uh, as we're getting into this, and they saw her at about four or five centimeters. So her cervix was dilating. Um, it looked like we were, we're, so we're going into active labor at about four or five centimeters, which is what you want to do. Right. So she's going through and it's six hours of just, it's intense. Mm. It is intense, man. And she, there's moments, you know, where she's like, I can't do this anymore. And you know, the, the duel is like, yes, you can, you can totally do this. And then the contraction would go away and then she'd gain her strength back and then we'd go into it again. This is six hours, dude. So what, what Oof. are the, what are the breaks between contractions at this moment? Some of them are, I dude. They were and you said some are short, like a minute, back to back. But how, what's the longest that the one would go? <sighs> man, we were lucky if we had a, a, a few minutes. Wow. Yeah. Man. Wow. Yeah. Really? I mean, at some point she was like, you know, one would go away and she'd be like, okay. And she'd, she'd just start talking to God. Okay, God, just give me two minutes. <laughs> just And then 20 yeah. seconds later, she'd have one. She's like, I made a deal with you. Ah! And she starts screaming, you know, and she's just going through. So oh, six hours of this and we're just crazy. And the nurses are coming in every once in a while and checking. And one of the nurses is like, can I check you? Can I check your cervix? And Jessica's like, no, don't check me. You know, and, no, don't check me. Finally, she's like, okay, let's see where I'm at. This is when shit starts to get really hard, right? She finally, she lays down. The nurse goes in, checks her, and she's like- uh, Not that much further along. Three centimeters. Went mm. backwards? Backwards. What? Oh. Three centimeters. That happens? Yeah. I didn't even know that happened. Neither did I. Wow. Oh, my God. She's like three centimeters. Oh, my God. That had to have been devastating uh, for yeah. her to f- hear well, that. Well, Jessica's like, fuck you. She's like- <laughs> What a punch. <laughs> oh, oh, no. Poor thing. That's what she said. You're lying. Fuck. And the nurse is like, I'll have someone else come and check just so you can see. <laughs> oh, <laughs> another nurse. a second opinion. Oh, yeah, dude. It's another nurse comes in, checks her, and she's like, I'm sorry. You're only at three. Oh. So at this part, at this point, oh my god, that had, I felt so bad I for know. her. Oh, oh, poor thing. At man. this point, mentally, you're just you break. You know what I mean? Oh, I remember when Katrina, what when we she had already been going for a minute, right, with contractions, and they were starting to get really hard, and then they they put her on the bed to check, and we just found out she was only five. And I remember just you when you when you're I mean I can imagine right when you know you got to get to ten and you're only at five and you're like oh I'm only halfway there so I can't imagine. Feeling like you're halfway there, and then getting on there after probably hours of contractions, and then being told you're Dude, going it's, backwards. It's a few oh. a few days of early labor after you know missing the deadline. Yeah. Then having you know having to do take a medicate uh, you know intervention right, and then going through hard labor, and then the, you know and so it's like she's just like this is insane. So she's now she's starting to break, and she's like, what do I do? Like what's going on? So the nurses of course are like, well, we could give you. Pitocin to speed it up and this and that, but we think you're, you know, we, we don't, you're, you maybe are, are afraid or too much pain or maybe you're pushing when you're not supposed to. Yeah. So they're saying all this stuff. So I'm looking at, you know, Jessica and I'm like, you know, look at, honey, there's nothing wrong with getting on some, uh, getting on an epidural. So you can stop with this, these intense contractions. Maybe that'll relax your body enough so that the, your, your, your cervix will, will dilate. 
And so we made the decision to, to get the, and what's funny too is the switch happens again mentally. Once she's like, let's do the epidural. Now it's like, get this motherfucker in here as fast as possible. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. That's all in. you needed is to allow yourself like, yes, I'm going to do this. Yeah. So then she's like, get him in here right now. I don't yeah. want to, you know what I mean? So <laughs> the, the, you know, the anesthesiologist comes in, hooks her up, pain is gone. They do the Pitocin. So now that we're just exhausted, everybody's, I'm tired. I'm exhausted from <laughs> supporting her and holding her up and doing it. So I can't even imagine yeah. how my, my, my poor wife is doing. I, I mean, again, I, I, I tell you what, man, I, she's so much stronger than me. If, if you know, if it were up to guys and I'm not going to, I hate to say this, but if it, was, if it was up to men, I think we'd make natural labor uh, illegal. We probably would make <laughs> yeah. it like you'd have to get, you know, under general anesthesia. Oh, for sure. No uh -huh. way. No way. So they, they, they put her in the epidural and they put her on a little bit of Pitocin because again, we want to do the slow mm -hmm. and the doctor's like, go to sleep. Let's go to sleep. Gather your strength. We're going to monitor the baby, monitor you. We'll wake up in the morning and then we'll see how everything is. So we're able to get some sleep. And uh, God, what a crazy feeling to have gone through hours and hours and hours of contractions, labor, the roller coaster, days. and then all of a sudden it's like, okay, let's put a pause on this. Go to sleep yeah. for a little bit. We'll we'll resume tomorrow. Dude, what a weird feeling. And yeah, and and the biggest fear was, uh, you know, she didn't want to have a, a C-section. Yeah. She's like, I don't want to end up having to get a C-section. I don't want to go through a surgery, I don't, you know, whatever. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we're like, listen, one step at a time, you know, you can still do this. So epidural, a little bit of Pitocin um, at when we wake up in the morning and they're still monitoring her and then they give her. And so that now this is all day. Now she's still laboring all day long on the epidural, more Pitocin, more Pitocin, you know, little by little, you know, it's hours and hours and hours later. And uh, doctors are monitoring the heart rate, and they're like, "Look, the the we think you can start pushing. You're at 10 centimeters. Although the the cervix, I guess there was like a the way they explained it, there was a, a lip. Uh, I don't know how they were explaining it, but they were saying that there was some of the cervix was still there, could get in the way. But they're like, we can try pushing now and see what happens. So she goes and 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 they like in, in time is now getting a little short because the baby's heart rate." the variability was starting to change a little bit. So oh. what they're looking for is the baby's heart rate to uh, when there's a contraction, slow down, and then when the contraction's gone, it speeds up very quickly. Mm. And that means baby's okay. When that variability starts to reduce, oh, wow. that means the baby's exhausted, starting to get tired. Mm. And that's when they start to say, okay, you know, we need to make yeah, this happen. Look into this. Yeah. Yes. So she's we get, get her in position to push. We're going through the pushing. Doctor's up there feeling around and is like, okay, I don't know if we're going to be able to do this because of your cervix is, although it's dilated, there's some of it's in the way. The baby's heart rate, and now the variability isn't doing so great. So the doctor's like, we need, we recommend uh, that we get this baby out right now. And so, you know. God, it's such a hard thing to hear, right? Oh, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, dude. Yeah. She broke down and, and you know, it was, it's like, okay. And I, I'm like, listen, we're going to see the baby. You know, yeah. we're going to see the baby. Right. She soldiered so hard leading up to that. Dude, you know? it was so, yeah. it was rough. Um, so you know they take us in to uh, they take her in and they take me in there and you know they put up a big like a big sheet or whatever yeah. so she can't because they keep her awake when mm. they do the procedure she's on epidural can't feel anything but they keep her awake so I'm next to her and it's like for her it's like her worst nightmare she's doing what she didn't want to do she's now in surgery now surrounded by all these yeah. doctors bright lights or whatever mm -hmm. um they're doing the thing and I'm, I'm with her i'm holding her hands and then you hear the baby cry and it's uh, like we just both lost it yeah yeah, I yeah. Bet. oh my god we both lost it and because of the circumstances uh they they had to check the baby first so they take the baby over right for away. about 10 15 minutes now at this point if Jessica could have got up off the table and karate kicked everybody in the room to get the baby, she would have. <laughs> yeah. Because now she's hearing the baby cry. Yeah. They're not putting it directly on her. Oh. So now she's like, give me my fucking baby. Like she's like, luckily she was not, she couldn't move, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah. And I'm like, honey, I'm with the baby. Everything's going to be fine. I'm with the, I'm watching them, but they're doing all the checking and stuff. Then they put the baby on her chest and it was like, oh, here we are. You know, uh. here we are with the kid. I see it's a boy. And, uh, and that's it, man. And wow. so, yeah. So, so now what, so what's, what's post look like that? So after a C-section, she has to stay there for a couple of days, I imagine. 
they they say they recommend four days, but if she could, uh, if everything else, if everything's going good, she can pass gas. They're looking to see if her bowels are working. Mm-hmm. Then they'll let you go home uh, earlier. So we're go- she's only going to be there for a few days. Okay, and then mm-hmm. we'll be able to go home. The the doula was there the whole time when we went when we went to sleep. The doula went to the parking lot and fell asleep in her little wow. car. Wow, what a champion! Waited for me to call. She waited for after the the C section. She went into the recovery room with us. She's, you know, doing helping her with the with the the, the latching. I mean, just unbelievable. Now, was, like the biggest, best investment you can make. I was so, yeah. the, and I agree too. Hundred percent, hundred percent. I our doula was amazing too. So a doula midwife uh, are those? Did that was that like a package deal for you guys, or were that two separate? Separate. They were separate. Yeah, so they work together, but they're but they're separate. <clears throat> and and so uh, and just curious, what happens when the midwife doesn't deliver the baby? Do you guys did you guys already pay that pay for that, and then you lose that, or what happens? I don't know, but there's a lot of uh, before and after care. So right. we're still you've doing. Got, you've already got a lot of value, no matter and what. we're still going to get the aftercare. So okay. then the, the the midwife comes, checks on mom, oh, checks good. on baby, mm-hmm. does all that stuff at home. So it's home visits. Because I hear too, it's it's. Uh, I mean, with the C section, it makes it hard for her. Breastfeeding is going to be a little more challenging, right? Just because she's been opened up right there. Yeah. Well, baby latched fine. Oh, right away. Yeah, baby latched fine. Awesome. Uh, um, and milk takes a little longer yeah. to come in. I think it's like average four days with the C section, and without, it's three days. But uh, you know, Aurelius was big kid. You know, he's uh, twenty two inches long, be a strong boy, eight pounds. Yeah, he was yeah, healthy, super alert. Now you know, that was the thing around. that I we had to battle a little bit because we were really adamant too about not using formula or anything. And and sometimes they give you a little bit of pressure about the milk coming in if it's not coming in fast enough. Oh, we need to give him some food. And right. so, you know, we luckily again we had our duel there. Be like, she'll be fine. She'll be fine. She's getting some. We'll get there. We'll get. He'll. We'll get him enough food. Don't worry. But they they start really quick trying to push the the formula even on us. Well, the thing that. about the hospitals is, is they'll they'll just do stuff without even asking you. Right, right. You have to be like, whoa, what are you doing right now? Yeah. It's yeah. on their procedures. Yeah, yeah. So we were adamant. Like everything you do, tell us first yeah. and get our permission first. Anything you give Jessica, anything you want to do the baby, you let us know and uh, before you do anything. And they were really good about that. So that was really good. But yeah, that's nice. I'll tell you what, man. It's like seeing my boy. You know, holding him, being with uh, with Jessica. I haven't seen my 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 other two kids. Uh, yeah, so they now. haven't. Now, has any of your family been able to see the baby yet? Nobody's because because of COVID. I know, I visit. know. So yeah. nobody's seen the baby. No, that's crazy. Yeah, so we're facetiming people and stuff. That, now, how are your family doing with that? My family would go insane. Katrina's family would go bananas. Dude. I I had like half her family in the goddamn labor in the in the room. I, know. I was like, pushing people out. Yeah, oh, they they wanted to be a part of everything. A lot of tears. A lot of talking to my aunts, and my mom, and everybody's bawling, and they want to see. They can't wait to see the baby and mm-hmm. it's just it's it's amazing man it's the greatest feeling in the world I, I am i you know i thought going into this i couldn't love my wife anymore and um and i do i do it actually i, I love her even more well right that's now. that's the mm-hmm. joke that goes around our house right now all the time like katrina always says that after after she had max she's like i i didn't realize like how much you didn't really love me before until i <laughs> <laughs> Until I had your son. It's, it's another a, it's, level. It is another yeah. level. And the, res- the respect I have for oh, her yeah, is yeah. just, it's it's on another level. She was such a warrior, a champion throughout this whole thing, tackling all these scenarios that she really didn't want to have to do, right. tackling her own you know, fear of the whole situation, seeing her with my son, uh, just, and now, I'm, now the next thing is I'm so excited to see my kids meet Oh yeah, their baby brother. It's oh, gonna yeah. be amazing you know? to see them interact oh, with them. I can't. I haven't seen them. You know, I haven't seen them now for yeah. for a week, and so I'm just like, can't. I can't wait to see them. Were you? See the baby. Did you eat? Yeah, I mean, hospital food. Oh, okay, uh, garbage. Yeah, we gotta yeah, get yeah. you some food, man. Yeah, yeah. 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 Gar- and I'll get on that. Garbage food, and I brought my, you know, my my shakes. So I had my Organifi shakes. So I'm drinking that. The That's whole what time. I, fig- I figured that. I figured we'd be sucking on green juice all day. Hey, long. it's all right though. I was bulking into it. You know, <laughs> <laughs> right. yeah. I've been eating so much food going into this. Stuff. <laughs> oh, yeah. I got a lot of reserves. You Hospital know? food's terrible. Yeah. So. but I, I dude, yeah. I got that. That I'm on that adrenaline. Like I know I'm tired. Yeah, yeah. I feel my body's tired, but I'm hyped. I was that way for like almost two weeks. Yes. I remember, I remember I was talking a little shit even. Remember, I, talk, I talked a little shit too much, you know? <laughs> I know better because oh, yeah. I got oh, you. Yeah, yeah. yeah, you've already done this. You were like way confident. Yeah, I was like, oh, this dude. is no big. You know, the yeah. other one, I was totally deceived. By, and it's funny because you sent the picture over and I'm like, oh, his eyes are open and everything. Like, because Max was preemie, it was a, a month early. 
His eyes were closed. He didn't cry. He didn't do any of that stuff. He's still supposed to be in, inside. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I don't so, know what you guys are talking about. Yeah. Easy. So for like the first two weeks, like <laughs> eyes closed, slap on me all the time. Nothing. I'm like, this shit's no big deal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I know. Once dude. that four weeks hit and he was, you know, he knew he was supposed to be out, you know, so it totally changed. You know, yeah, totally yeah, changed. Yeah. So. Oh, it's 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 great. I mean, now the challenge is because she had a C section, mm. she can't move a ton. So, but that's okay. Her mom's with us. Uh, I'll be there. Oh, so her mom did extend her stay. She was able to extend her stay. And then we have a postpartum doula that'll be coming, which uh, I think that's oh, going to be yeah, that's pretty coming to collect. Yeah, so she'll be with us a few hours a day to help with. Well, I was a C-section baby, just so were you? Know, we'll have that connection. Yeah, oh, you're, I didn't know that. Aurelius, yeah. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, I, came, I, they, I was coming out feet first, and so they, they were like, <laughs> "Nope." Yeah, so always we got to intervene. Always doing shit backwards. Uh, you know, like you I know? just have different ideas. It explains a lot. The yeah. cakes had to come out first. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. They couldn't push those through. <laughs> <They're> <laughs> like, oh my god, we're gonna. Oh my god. <laughs> uh, and, and his head the, is so hey, big. Oh, it's a, not his head. Just the legs got out. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> the, the big ass ass cheeks <laughs> got stuck. <laughs> Ren, rending his mom around. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, yeah. well, you're healthy as shit. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. I'm saying, don't even worry about it. I don't know if your big ass head would have made it through anyway. No, probably. It's a cranium, dude. Yeah, it's done damage. Yeah, dude. Dude, so yeah. oh man well we timed it wrong i tell story, you what dude. man i that was we were off on that we all thought we would the week the week what a week before when we all took off we were all up and who would have thought i know yeah. i would have never i would have yeah. never guessed it would it was gonna go that long i yeah. remember thinking like every day like dude when's sal gonna send us this text it's gotta be this? today yeah, yeah we just kept saying this. it's gotta be today yeah, yeah. Dude, but yeah but i mean here we are you know everybody's healthy i'm over the moon. I'm like, so again, I'm on cloud. I, it's like, I can't even think straight. I'm so on another, another level. It's know? such a rad feeling. It's, uh, it's, I, I love, I love when people go through it again, cause you remember what that feels dude, like. The first night. So funny. Cause obviously Jessica's, you know, she's on pain medicine and you know, she's, <clears throat> She's just been through a lot, and you know the baby's laying there, and I'm like, I want to play with this kid, you know. So I'm like, <laughs> as soon as I see like a little bit of movement, I'm like picking him up, and she's like, put him back down. You know? <laughs> he needs to sleep. I'm like, but I want to play with him. You know? uh, have yeah, you got yeah. to do skin to skin yet? Did you oh yeah, right, 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 oh. right away. Oh yeah, yeah. So I, I took my shirt off and had him on me and. Uh, did the whole thing and yeah, dude. Oh, exciting! Dude. I know, man. I'm so, I'm Super so, excited. I'm so, so what do you guys? What you guys been up to? I haven't seen you guys. Well, for we, were a while. we were up in Tahoe for damn near a week, huh? Well, yeah, yeah, a few days. Yeah, like, and then I and I went to Paso Robles, like the other half of it, for you know hanging out and doing quote unquote camping. Yeah, uh, with the kids so uh, for why, Halloween. Why, why quote? Well, I don't know if you consider it camping if you're in like a trailer. So we like rented sure. a trailer. Okay. Sure, that's <laughs> Adam's like, that's hella rough. Yeah, 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 exactly. <laughs> it's a, to me, that's glamping. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so we, I mean, we had, we had a good time down there just because there was only a few families that we knew from the school. So it was like, you know, with, we didn't really know what it was going to be like with COVID and everything in Halloween. And so we, we kept it pretty much within like four families that we all just kind of knew ahead of time. And we were able to kind of make a party out of it, have them trick or treat a little bit. And I also went to uh, the gun range and that was fun with, uh, with one of the guys. It was funny. The story was uh, we were driving to this gun range down in Paso Robles and uh, all of a sudden, we just ended up in a Trump rally. This is before like the election and everything kind of went down. And we, we were just driving, and we became part of the parade. <laughs> without without, without trying. even trying. Yeah, we were like, what, what's happening? <laughs> like, all of a sudden, like there's just flags everywhere. And we were just immersed in this. And we, we couldn't move. We were like trying to drive like, you know, like a couple miles down the street. And like we were just in it. And everybody's honking at us. Some people yelling at us, flipping us off. And I'm like, I'm not. I'm just here. You know, we're just driving. <laughs> You know, to you know, to try to get to this this gun range, it was just hilarious, like oh, how dude. that happened. Dude, what did you What did you fire? Uh, so we we did like a forty four magnum, and and we did like a nine millimeter. Oh yeah, yeah, good. just like the indoor good. range, dude. I, and so yeah, so of course my son was born on election day. Yeah, I know. Yeah, how crazy that is too. that, dude? So appropriate. You know what though? So appropriate. I'll tell you what. I could explains give, why that was a little chaotic. With, I uh, the birth. I couldn't give a shit about you know because my son. Yeah, was born, you didn't know anything. Did not care. I know, yeah. and it felt good. Yeah, oh, made me realize just the insanity of the whole thing. Uh, Do yeah. not care. Yeah. Do not care what's going on. Even even now, I look up there. You know, it's arguing. really not as important as people make. It yeah, I have a I have a funny story for you that happened to Justin. He, he's probably not going to share it because he felt guilty. But I think it's just every time I see these like dad situations happen oh, that, no. that are like early for it's, I'm early right, so I don't see these things. We're we're hanging out. We're in Truckee, right? And uh, I think Courtney puts the kids to bed at this point. 
and uh, Justin's youngest comes downstairs, and he's like, devast- oh, he's man, devastated, dude. He's oh, like, no. he's like, just, just so upset. Like, first of all, they don't want to go to bed at, at this time, right? It's I can't remember what time it was. It was like nine o'clock or whatever. Yeah, it was, it was nine o'clock. It was nine o'clock. It's their bedtime, and I think were we watching a movie or doing something? They wanted to stay up. They wanted to stay up. Yeah, and you know, Justin was like, no, it's bedtime, and so they they put him to bed. But it, and this just shows you how how great and manipulative and smart kids are. You know, it's like so it sends him to bed, <clears throat> and he remembers that Justin promised they would go fishing yep. that that day. Oh, and so he comes down like crying. You know that they, you know, you know, Dad yeah. made a promise that yeah. we would. You go. promised me, Dad. Yeah. Like, yeah. like, like with that voice, yeah. Yeah. it just killed me. Yeah. You know, like it totally destroyed me. Like <laughs> I'm a terrible father. Ah! Yeah. You know, does it help that I'm putting fuel on the fire afterwards too? Like, Oh, I can't oh. believe you didn't take him. Fishing. I know you did. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm going so, up there trying to good solemn, you know, and like trying to figure all this stuff out because I mean, it was, it was cool because uh, Adam and I both like, were thinking about like trying to get back into fishing and like learning fly fishing. Cause I had, I had like, this was when I was a kid. I was introduced to it, but I never really learned it. And so it was kind of like one of those cool things that, you know, later in life, I'm like, wow, this would be cool to pick it up and do it with my kids. And, you know, and Adam's kind of do it at the same time. It's kind of good timing. So we made like a big purchase. We went down to like Cabela's and we bought like all the gear and oh, all the bro, stuff. You let Adam influence you. <laughs> oh, dude. <laughs> such a, I mean, that's part of it. That's an Adam move. Hey, You'll get bro, that so. was easy though, because I was all about the fishing anyways. Yeah. So it was, I was like, hey, bro, this is how you commit yourself to doing it right here. <laughs> yeah, that you part. Spent, yeah. Spent I spent way too much money. I bet you guys spent like a thousand. Oh, yeah, 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 we did. Way too <laughs> much money. <laughs> Dude, hey, bro, we were just geared, under. geared up. Dude. Yeah, of course oh, dude, you yeah. are. We got oh, the yeah. boots, the, the freaking stupid, trap. Stupid amount of stuff. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Just yeah. unnecessary. We will not need anything, though. At no. All. Make sure you leave it up the house so I can borrow it. Yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> so oh, it's up there. Yeah, yeah. yeah no, it's all, it's all yeah. set up for you. So I had to like, so basically the next day, why they had to go to bed? Because they had school next morning. And so like anytime they have a school night, I'm like, I'm just like firm. Yeah. Like, you got to go to bed. Uh, and so like, I'm just thinking I'm milling this over. I'm trying to tell them, you know, I'm going to make it up to you, whatever. Like I'm trying to figure this out. Right. And so I'm like, you know what? Like, why do we always have to do what the school says? You know, <laughs> let's just not go to school tomorrow. <laughs> You know, I'm just not going to have them sign in. We're just going to go fishing. I'm just, I'm making this decision for the family. You know, we're doing this. Like, and so I just. Truth I, is dad's guilty. That's what truth it is. Truth is, yeah. <laughs> I felt like, oh, it just, it really was this like punch in the nuts, yeah. you know, that I had to deal with. And so we went and uh, first thing before we left in the morning, like we went out and went fishing. The, the kids, uh, you know, had a great time. The thing, the thing that warmed me up though later is when we were down in Paso Robles and they're talking to their friends and they're like. Shit. Sharing that you yeah, were. sharing that it was like such a big deal to them. Now, you know? why this is comical for me, you have to understand that. So I see all of it on the outside, right? I know that the kids just want to stay up because mm-hmm. it's fucking TV. You know, they want to watch TV long. It has nothing to do with fishing. But now that they have to go to bed, they, they remembered. Oh, they remembered, yeah. and then they pulled that. You probably held that and in then, the back oh, pocket. Oh, totally. And then uh, I watched Justin. I could see card. him get manipulated. Just yeah. like you could just see his heart sink. Like you see your little boy cry. Like yeah. you're supposed to take me fishing, Dad. Well, because I said it. I remember saying it too. And yeah, it's like if what, I promise well, something, I'm gonna do it. That's well, so it. this is where this gets better though, and he's leaving this part of the story out that I think is funny. Is this this is the day before they have to get up in the morning, yeah. get the house all clean, pack the cars up, drive back to San Jose, then drive down to Paso Robles. They got six hours of driving ahead of them. They got to get everything already. And this motherfucker decides to get up and go yes. fishing in the morning before all of this stuff yeah. because he felt so guilty. So. And packed everything and did everything beforehand and was <laughs> yeah. like, you know, getting the gear ready and you know, all the night before. And dude, it was, it was madness. And yeah. then driving all the way down there, I didn't even bring up this part of it. So my truck broke down again. Wow. What? Yeah. So we were down in Paso robles and I, I realized there's this like pool and i'm like what is this i thought it was oil but it was like turns out it was radiator fluid and uh, i had just got it back because they had fixed my air conditioning and so i was like what is happening and you know we, we ended up pulling over because my my water temperature was going you know pretty high and it was fluctuating a lot i'm like i can't i can't drive you know another three hours back mm-hmm. home without like taking care of this and of course it's on the weekend so you can't just take it to the mechanic you know nobody's open and so like basically we i saw that that one of the hoses had had gone down into the fans and had chewed it up oh and so it was just spraying oh my god everywhere and so i'm here with both dogs so not not 
only that, I had the dogs with me, which is like oh, a whole God. other nightmare, right? And then the kids, and then, you know, Courtney's like, and I'm trying to calm everybody down and be super calm about all this stuff. And so I, I stopped at like Home Depot and I'm trying to find parts and things. And I'm like, Home Depot doesn't have shit, you know? <laughs> like, yeah. like I got like that flex, flex all like tape. Flex seal? Flex seal. Oh, you know, yeah. the guy with the boat? Yeah. You know, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was like, maybe this guy knows who he's talking Bro, about. Bro, he paints the yeah. side of the boat and it floats. Hey, it's got to <laughs> work. Yeah. Right? It's got to keep the water out, you know? Like, <laughs> like this is going to work. Uh, and so I do that and I'm like t- t- taping it up with like electrical tape and like, I'm like, this isn't going to hold. And so I have to go find like an auto part store, hold just enough so I could like drive across town to another place. And so I'm out there like in the parking lot, like getting different hoses, different like attachments and grommets, all these types of things. And I'm like putting it all together. And, uh, it, you know, I finally like feel like, okay, this is going to hold. And then it's like kind of leaking a little, but then I like, you know, tape a bit of that and I get home. Uh, and we, we were the whole time I'm just stressed out, you know, driving home and all this stuff. And then, uh, and then I went and found like the right parts. I fixed it, uh, you know, with the hose, but now I got to take it to the dealership. But anyway, that was a whole nother thing. Wow. So I had a big scare last week too. I was, you know, and I don't know if it's because of the conversations that we were having and all this, like, Turning forty, you teasing me for going bald. Justin, tell me I'm gonna get a <laughs> get a finger up my ass really soon here. Like hey. I've got all this like old man Lots stress going on. Too. Good times. And I I go over to grab uh, my Felix Grays. I'm getting ready to. It's like we're in Tahoe. I'm getting ready to get on my computer, do some work. And I grab them. I put them on. And I start like. Look, and the computer is like super blurry, dude. And I'm fucking freaking. I'm freak. I'm freaking <laughs> my out. My eyesight's going. Yeah, I'm like, oh my god, a ball. I'm gonna figure out my ass. And now, now my eyesight. I'm having a stroke. Oh, dude, I freak out. And I'm like, and I pull them off. And I'm, I keep pulling them off, put them on. And I'm like, what the hell? And then I didn't realize. I I thought because Justin's face is so fat, I didn't think that he. <laughs> wow. I didn't think that he, he had to insert the. <laughs> hey, you know I, the fat cheek. I didn't know. I didn't know yeah. that he wore the same uh, Nash Felix craze. I thought I was the only one that because those are for like narrow faces. So uh, I thought uh, I was the only one that had that. So I guess yeah, they he, don't fit me that well. He left his on the on the table. I have the same black pair, but mm. mine are just like the regular ones. He has a prescription. Yeah. Oh. prescription. so he's got the prescription ones, <laughs> and I've got the prescription on. And I'm like, the screen's all blurry yeah. and shit. I think it's. My eyes, Bro, I how, freaking yeah. out. So how long did that you freak out hilarious. for? Oh, I mean, it, it only lasted about three to five minutes because I called Katrina and I'm like, I don't Dude, know what's going I on can't with me. See. And she's like, Oh, Justin <laughs> was looking for his, his Felix Craze. And I pull him off. I look, Oh, these are the Nashes. He doesn't have Nash. Thank God that, yeah. you see, thank God that's not me. You yeah. know, you know what I would have done? I would have been on Google. Oh, <laughs> yeah. I have brain cancer. <laughs> yeah, I, I knew it. That, oh, I told man. you guys about the time I thought I had testicular cancer. <laughs> and then there was another time when uh, I, don't, I don't remember what was happening, but I was getting like these tingling sensation. It was just a lot of stress. This what it turned out to be yeah but i'm of course i'm thinking to myself like this is uh this is how ms starts <laughs> oh my god you know what if yeah. i have ms anyway i'm so i'm freaking myself out because i'm paranoid about this kind of shit and i didn't and I, I, i'm in my bedroom and i i keep smelling this strange smell so at the time i'm asking everybody in the room do you guys smell that do you guys they're like i don't smell anything and i'm like this is a, this is this is a sign there's of, another sign of either yeah. brain tumor or ms like smelling weird anyway it was a freaking teacup i had next to my bed with with, <laughs> the, with an old tea bag in there and i lifted up i'm like oh my god dude. but i stressed uh, myself the fuck out for like god. a day Too over funny. that kind of stuff all those old tea bags first question is from Brian Pata can you guys break down how to analyze a physique with terms like origins insertions muscle bellies etc I've heard these terms thrown around a lot, and I'd love to learn from you guys about it. All right, Justin. Yeah. Tell us no, I got this, <laughs> I'm going to defer to I'm Justin. steer this conversation <laughs> where I want it to go. Really, what you're going to look for is, you know, that sort of like symmetrical V tapering, you know, I don't know what the hell I'm talking about. <laughs> Come on, guys, help me. Is that what I sound like when I talk about basketball <laughs> yeah. or football? 100%. Yeah. I just okay. know enough terms to like pr- pretend I'm in this conversation. Yeah. So these are all these are all terms that were uh, used and created in, by the the physique presentation um, spaces and industry. Well, some bodybuilding. Of them, some of them, I mean, uh, some of them is anatomy, right? So origin and insertion is just where the the muscle yeah. attaches to the bone. Right? Yeah, so. but the way that the that they use it in anatomy and the way bodybuilders use it is is a little different. So, oh, okay. okay. Yeah, I'll so, give you that. Yeah, so these these are terms that were... <laughs> the, the bodybuilders that are using that are just trying to sound fucking smart. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> He's got nice calf yeah, insertions. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Wow. Exactly. yeah, the insertions what? are the same. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so so these are terms that are were used by bodybuilders, physique competitors, the, the judges, you know, bikini uh, competition, fitness competition figure to kind of uh, explain 
the you know what causes uh, someone to look like to have the right aesthetics for that sport. So bodybuilding aesthetics, you know what what are they looking for? They're looking for um, a good shoulder to waist ratio. Typically, the wider the shoulders and the smaller the waist, the better. They're also looking for symmetry. Symmetry meaning that both sides of the body match. Um, you know your re- your right and left match. Balance. Well, balance means does my chest uh, overpower my back or vice versa? Do my legs match my upper body? Do I have big upper legs, but do I have small calves? That would be. Do you have dry glutes, bro? <laughs> you know what I mean? Actually, that's, that's glad, that is a good one. I'm glad you said that. Yeah, yeah. It's dry any glutes right <laughs> yeah, there. Yes. Right? When someone says you, you're very, oh man, he came in real dry. What they mean is not only are you lean, but you don't have any water under your skin, so you look like an anatomy chart, right? Uh, you're shredded. Striations refer to the the lines and the muscle and all that stuff. So origin insertion in 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 these in this context means how. How big or how long is the bicep? Yeah, I would say how long or how bubbly. Yeah. Right? So someone's going to say they have like a long origin insertion if they have like a big, big, long muscle. If they have like a short, small, bubbly, like a Columbo, like a physique. Yes. Versus Arnold, right? Yes. Arnold would be like, oh, he has long origin insertions and Columbo would be he's got this short origin insertion. What a great example. Look at Franco Columbo's bicep if you want. You could pause the podcast, look it up, put Google Franco Columbo's bicep. And then Google Arnold Schwarzenegger's bicep. And one thing you'll notice besides the, the different shape is that Arnold's bicep seems to be longer. It's cl- it, it, it seems to get closer to the elbow than Franco Colombo's uh, bicep does. So that's what they're talking about with muscle bellies, insertions, and origins. Now, in bodybuilding, long muscle bellies, uh, is it looks more aesthetic because, you know, if I have a calf that is really short and up near my knee – versus a calf that seems to go all the way down to my ankle, when you develop both of them, the one that seems to go down to the ankle is just going to look bigger. It just seems to be more uh, visually appealing from a bodybuilding standpoint. What a great picture. Actually, Doug brought uh, actually pulled up a picture of Arnold and Franco flexing ne- next to each other, and you can see the clear- You almost said naked. They're, no, they're, <laughs> Sorry, just keep that's going. That's the other yeah, picture yeah, that yeah, Doug- yeah. That was on Doug's hard drive. Yeah. Uh, so you know that's kind of what they're referring to, and- you know, aesthetics in physique competition sports are more extreme, but they're based off of what we naturally would consider to be healthy. So a man with a small waist and wide shoulders, what does that usually mean? Well, it means he's lean. It means he probably has good testosterone levels, or at least it, it points in that direction. Um, it means that he probably has good use of his arms and legs, uh, which might have been beneficial in hunting and in running. You know, wide hips and narrow shoulders, probably you're not going to be able to throw as well or run as well. But, you know, what about women? Why do women have such wider hips than men do? Well, they need a wider pelvis to birth a child. So we consider that to be, you know, more attractive. Of course, smaller waist also. It's really just an exaggerated version of that. Yeah, Yeah. totally exaggerated. Yeah, that's exactly what it is. I mean, it's balance and symmetry. It's, uh, and I think a lot of the terms that (laughs) I've honestly, I've sat with many competitors and, you know, talked about other people on the on the on the stage, and I think uh, probably eighty percent of what you hear is a bunch of fluff. You know, people sounding acting smarter than what they really are, trying to sound like they know it. You know, the guy who's throwing like the random term, like Sal talking about sports. That's exactly what it sounds like yeah. to me <laughs> yeah. when I hear guys talking about stuff like that because it's it really just comes down to that, like having a really good looking physique coming in super lean, so all the muscle is defined. And the smaller the waist, the broader the shoulders for a male in bodybuilding, I think, and they're the, the better they're going to score. Yeah. And I, I'll tell you what, if you're just, if you don't care about competing, which is 99% of the people listening right now, mm. this is what you do train your whole body. Don't leave out an area. Train lots of different movements. Make sure you squat. Make sure you press. Make sure you row and you pull. Make sure you twist and rotate with your exercises. Uh, make sure you do split stance uh, type squatting exercises. Do all those things, develop your whole body, maintain a decent body fat percentage by not overeating and eating a healthy diet, and you're going to look phenomenal. Don't worry about all these insane terms and how you can exaggerate your- Translucent delts, bro. Yeah, that's not- (laughs) That's not what- Yeah, (laughs) you don't want translucent delts. That means they're not there. (laughs) Next question is from Zach Thompson, 15. What are your favorite exercises and movements in the sagittal and trans- transverse planes. There you go, Justin. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. 
Uh, so in terms of like a transverse plane of movement, this is one of those that a lot of people like you never see this in the gym. I always get excited. You guys get excited certain seeing certain exercises when you walk into a gym. This is where I get a little bit excited when I see somebody actually intentionally uh, trying to do something, even if it's as simple as a step up, but they're now adding in rotation, uh, rotation yeah. which, um, you, you know, that gets me excited because you're actually considering the long term uh, effects of training on the body. And I think that uh, uh, you know, to not consider these things, you're going to put yourself in a position where, you know, you're, you're going to suffer the consequences of that uh, later. So I, I really like, um, you know, even if it's like a bodybuilder move where it's like an Arnold press, like for instance, like getting rotation out of the shoulders and adding the strength and, and, you know, muscle development. Uh, that's a, that's a great exercise for that alone. And it's not that complicated. So like to be able to do things that aren't quite as complicated, um, one of my ultimate favorite uh, exercises exercises that, uh, you know, I get a lot of feedback from when people actually go into our MAPS performance program is the, the, the lunge matrix. And the reason why I like that so much, which I could have done that too with step ups, a very mm -hmm. similar type of a complex with that, um, <clears throat> because we hit all those different planes. I have to move and adjust my body and, and plot, uh, where everything is going to uh, land and be able to stabilize and be able to control my body in those different movements and express strength to dig my way out of those movements as well. So, uh, I mean, you, you go forward in the sagittal plane, you go out to the side, you know, in the frontal plane, and then we twist our body intentionally and we pick a spot, we come down. So we get that rotation, we control the body again, we drop. So, uh, I mean, that's pretty much one of the better exercises for yeah. uh, encompassing all of it. Yeah. Transverse plane really involves a lot of rotating, right? Rotating and twisting. It's probably the most uh, neglected plane uh, of exercise, right? When you go to the gym, you don't you, you you see people doing things in front of them, right? Curls and tricep press. That's why I thought it was like weird. I, I thought it was weird. This person asked the, sagittal. Yeah, yeah. Sa everything's in, damn. Yeah, everybody's doing that. Yeah, everything. So, every extra. Every common exercise you see is sagittal. They probably meant frontal. Yeah, frontal is. I mean, there's a lot of common exercise in front. You know, laterals, side laterals sure. is in, is in side the lunge. side lunges. Side lunges. Transverse is where you, a lot of people miss. They miss out. They don't do a lot of stuff in this plane and. And as a result, they don't develop uh, a lot of balance and nice insertions in there. No, I'm just kidding. They, <laughs> yeah. they don't develop balance in their movement. That's the area I would say if you if you work out a, a lot, uh, pay attention to how many exercises you you do that involve rotation because you're probably yeah. not doing a whole lot. Everything else is every other common exercise is sagittal usually. And then, you know, I'd say that the second most common is the, is the frontal, right? Yeah, no, everything is in the set. I mean, so can simplify this for everybody. So, like, the fact that we're even using these terms, I think, is silly for most yeah. people. Yeah. Sagittal is just forward and back, right? So exercises in, in front of you or back of you, basically, almost everything you do, a squat, uh, a forward lunge. Deadlift. All, yeah, deadlift. Everything Bench is press, yeah, yeah, everything is typically in the sagittal plane. So that's that's pretty basic. Uh, transverse plane is m mostly rotational movements, and you just don't see a lot of people doing that. Uh, did either, I don't hear either one of you guys say like land landmine rotation? Oh yeah, right, landmine that's rotation. a great one. Yeah, that's a great one. Trunk rotation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Lizard with rotation for like a mobility drill, like any sort of. And we talk. Justin especially talks a lot about or like a medicine ball throw against the wall. Like mm -hmm. these are just anytime you start to incorporate rotational movement, you're in the transverse plane. So focusing on that and incorporating that. Uh, I'm a fan. Windmill. I mean, we didn't. You didn't oh, talk. Right. You, that's your go-to. Like you yeah. always love to talk about the windmill. Uh, I think just incorporating rotational movement in your program is necessary. If you follow, and I, this is, uh, you know, we've actually talked about this recently, the RGB bundle where you go through our anabolic performance and then aesthetic, we make sure to address that, like especially in performance. Performance has a lot of the transverse plane incorporated it, and that's because anabolic is mostly in the sagittal plane because we – are focused more on building the metabolism, building strength, laying a good foundation, like you should, and then we transition where we start to incorporate more rotational movements in there. And so if you're programming yourself, I think that that's something that should definitely, you either should intermittently always be putting uh, that in your routine, or it should be something you phase into every few months for sure. Oh, that's, well, how, you, that's how you develop balance. Yeah, and I think too, because I know initially when we started this podcast, we were very much like heavy in the bodybuilding type community. And so, you know, that's where I, I really like saw a deficiency there in terms of like having uh, twisting and rotation uh, incorporated in the programming of a lot of these, even if it's, you know, because we're, we're 
trying to single out these joints and and really like focus in on like very specific muscles by themselves. But uh, you know, talking to bodybuilders and having bodybuilder type uh, models come in and do these exercises for our programs and stuff, I get to talking with them, and it's just uh, neglecting those have caused things like you know shoulder impingements, like they're they're suffering certain issues and pains and arthritis and whatnot as a result because they're not expressing their joint to its full uh, capacity. Yeah, I mean, if you're looking for balance in your body and you want it to look well put together, you you work in all these different planes. And like Adam said, if, if you were to do uh, like our RGB bundle, you know, the, the first program in there is about building maximal strength and muscle. And then you move into working so many different planes of movement to develop balance. And then you move into, at the end, sculpting and shaping the body with a with a legit bodybuilding type workout but what that produces in terms of physique is a very well to put together well balanced a um, nice looking body and physique with longevity with longevity next question is from shelby purser what's the best advice i can give to my sister who just recently found out she's diabetic you know so step number one i would do this um have her train to build muscle, and here's why. Building muscle is a phenomenal insurance against uh, diabetes, or at least getting your body to manage its blood sugar and how it re reacts and responds to insulin. Muscle uh, uses up uh, glucose and glycogen. It stores it. It's, an, it's a very active tissue. When you build muscle, you'll find, I found clients uh, have to use you know, for people who are type one, have to use less insulin. I've seen other clients use less medication to bring their, their sugar down because now they've built muscle. So building muscle, very important. It makes a huge difference uh, for diabetics. As far as diet is concerned, there's a lot of mixed messages you get out there. Some people would say studies show going real low carb is the best thing. Other people would say, well, studies actually show eating lower fat is a good thing. Here's what they all have in common. They're not overeating. Getting yourself at a nice, lean body fat percentage. You don't need to get shredded, but in a healthy body fat percentage range. Not overeating. Avoiding heavily yeah. processed foods because that really encourages overeating. Um, avoiding, because you're automatically avoiding heavily processed foods, you automatically avoid things like lots of sugars and lots of added sodiums and stuff like that. You'll find that it'll be easier for her to manage her diabetes. And I've even seen, and I'm not saying this will happen to your sister, but I've seen with friends of mine where they've really done this and taken this seriously. And over the course of a year... Got rid of it. Yeah, it got to the point where it was barely measurable or not measurable at all yeah. because they did those things. Well, that's I was first of all, uh, I'm not a doctor and I'm not a nutritionist, okay? So uh, definitely, I think you should... Uh, you know, seek out somebody that is a professional in the field for sure. And we're talking about an individual that I don't know anything about other than what you're just telling us right here. But I will share with you some some generic advice that has worked for many of my clients. And that's similar to what Sal said. Um, as far as nutrition, uh, a paleo-esque diet has worked best for me with clients like this. So like in eating like a paleo type of diet, it's not super, super low carb, you're, but you're making better choices as far as your carbohydrates. Uh, it's, you know, moderate protein, moderate fat, uh, it's at whole foods. So I think that's a really good place to start nutritionally, generically, generic answer. Right. And then, uh, as far as like exercises, it's getting the weight down. I've seen many people that are either borderline diabetic or become diabetic. And because we're on top of it right away, that six months of training or whatever like that, we can completely eliminate that. And through losing body fat, getting their mm -hmm. body fat down a lot of times will do that. So, you know, I would look into uh, a nutritionist or following a routine or a nutrition routine similar to something like paleo. And then I would just really focus on being in a caloric deficit and focus on building muscle, like Sal said. And those two things uh, should hopefully combat this. Next question is from Jeff Gilstrap. Here's a scenario. You're invited on the Joe Rogan podcast. What are the top three messages you'd like to send out to his audience with the reach that he has? Oh, yeah. Rogan's the king oh. of the podcast space, isn't he? Man, what are his numbers these days? Because I know it was like 100 million or something uh, a month at one point, and I'm sure he's skyrocketed you know, he's beyond like, that. Yeah, he's doing like several million per episode. I yeah, know. at it's, least. Yeah, it's, yeah. Uh, it's, it's ridiculous. It's, yeah, he's got a huge reach. Um, uh, you know, I think one of the things I would like to talk about is how resistance training really should be the go-to form of exercise for everybody. 
uh, form of exercise for everybody. It's it's not right now. Um, people who lift weights tend to be people who think to themselves, oh, I want to shape and sculpt my body. I want to build muscle. There's still that bodybuilder stereotype. I mean, if you step outside of the fitness space, talk to the average person, your mom, your dad, your aunt, your uncle, your neighbor about lifting weights, you'll probably co- get comments like, oh, I don't need to do that. I'm not trying to look like a bodybuilder. I don't need to build huge biceps. That's not that big of a deal. The, the go-to form of exercise typically is walking, running, swimming, biking. It tends to be cardiovascular exercise. But in reality, it should be resistance training. That should be the first line of defense. That should be the first form of exercise that everybody gets recommended to do. And this is for a few different key reasons. Uh, one, there's no form of exercise that can be modified like resistance training. There is no form of exercise I can think of that's appropriate for everybody like resistance training. I can literally design a resistance training workout for someone who's paralyzed, someone who's 85, someone who's 15, someone who's mobile, someone who's terrible mobility, someone who wants to lose 100 pounds or someone who wants to gain 30 pounds of muscle. Resistance training is the most modifiable form of exercise, especially when you use free weights. It doesn't matter how tall, short you are or, or how you move. You can train any body. The second reason that I would recommend it is if you consider most people's situation in modern societies, busy as hell, but very inactive. So they're not moving a lot, but they're really, really busy. So they don't have a lot of time to exercise. And if they tell you they do, they're lying. Most people will not dedicate more than a couple days a week to exercise. I'm talking about the average person. They're also surrounded by a lot of food. So there's a lot of good food around us. It tastes really good. We, we're, we're blessed that we live in a society like that, but it also poses challenges. I'm not moving much. I'm really busy, and I got all this food around me. Okay, what can I do? What kind of exercise can I do that's two days a week that will give me the most bang for my buck? Resistance training. It's going to speed up your metabolism, It's going to, which allows you to eat more, and it, you don't need to do it every single day like you would with cardiovascular activity in order to reap the benefits because it directly – speeds up the metabolism. Even when you're talking about older population, it, you know, they, they lose mobility, lose strength, they have bone loss, hormones go out of balance, men testosterone levels go down, women's progesterone and estrogen, and estrogen, excuse me, out of balance. No form of exercise directly reverses bone loss, directly helps with mobility, of course, muscle. No form of exercise has been positively shown to improve hormone levels, especially testosterone levels in men like resistance training. So in today's world, with all that, when you go to the doctor or your mom goes to the doctor and the doctor says, you need to start exercising, what they should be saying is, you need to start lifting weights. Let's start you off 30 minutes twice a week and let's get going. Yeah, I think too, uh, listening to his show, as long as I have, and I've appreciated a lot of different guests he's had on, um, but there's still like, and he's brought a lot of really good guests in terms of uh, fitness professionals, nutrition experts, and had like his own debates that he's presented to give points on both sides and tries to be measured. Um, I do sense a lot of emphasis, though, on, you know, still a lot of the punishment mentality. And what I mean by that is like a lot of the guys that come on there for motivation and for inspiration. And, you know, a lot of that is led, uh, you, you know, by these crazy, badass, you know, Navy SEAL guys and people that come on there that really, you know, hype a lot of, you know, that particular demographic into uh, you, you know, working out and trying to improve their life. And uh, w- what's not being highlighted is how un- unsustainable that is. And and, and what we try to uh, sort of voice out is where I think he should consider like – Really, like if, if we were to, to go on there, I would I would try to to hype up a different message in terms of you don't have to punish yourself. You can actually benefit yourself and do this and get all you know the results that you want by approaching it a completely different way and, and loving yourself and going into it with that mentality. And we get into the psychology of you know how we trained our clients with nutrition and and training and what a difference that makes you know for longevity and sustainability. Uh, so that's definitely something that I would like, you know, if we had the chance to really kind of, you know, bring that into the conversation more, because I just don't think that, uh, you know, he's really addressing the average person that's listening. Uh, he's really like emphasizing more to the athletes and, and the people in that uh, category. Uh, that's a great answer, Justin. I, I was actually looking at this going like, I don't know, because, well, 
first of all, I don't think if we were going on Joe Rogan's podcast, this is how I would think about it. Like I wouldn't go like, I've got some messages I want to make sure I get out there. Like I literally would just enjoy the moment. The oh, fact yeah. that just having a conversation. Yeah, with having you, a conversation with Joe about life and podcasting and just shooting the shit, probably smoking a joint with him, I think would just be an, an epic, fun conversation for me. So I wouldn't go in there, but I'll play this game, right? So uh, I'll play your silly game. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we'll play this silly hey, game. You want to play the game? Let's so, the game. Uh, you know, first of all, Sal's right. We'd probably stay in our lane most of the time, which would be talking about exercise, which is where we're at. And I think Justin alluded to that also. Like, I mean, that's definitely um, our expertise is training average people and, you know, programming for them and addressing, like Justin's saying, like the the David Goggins, the Jockos, like the the type of Ben Greenfields, the, get, the kind of extreme guests that he's had on the show when it's related to fitness. I just and the fact that he's he's attracting the masses, that message doesn't really I think apply to most of the masses. But yet that's what they're getting on that show. So I would love to to counter that uh, with you. And then a nutrition along that line too. He's also done the same thing with nutrition, like a carnivore expert, a vegan expert, a keto expert. And the truth is, like none of those one diets is great for the majority. It's more about teaching people about learning about their own body nutritionally versus like a diet. So I think we would get into that. And then third, uh, I would tell them that uh, gorilla kettlebells are stupid. <laughs> oh, snap. <laughs> Excellent. Look, Mind Pump is recorded on video as well as audio. So if you want to look at our faces while we talk, check us out on YouTube. You can also find us on Instagram, including Doug, the producer. If you want to look at the behind the scenes stuff, go find Doug on Instagram at Mind Pump Doug. You can find Justin at Mind Pump Justin, Adam at Mind Pump Adam, and Sal at Mind Pump Sal. Okay, so I think what we should do is give some giveaways here, like our our, our top 10 favorite arm exercises, five for triceps, five for biceps. Hopefully you're doing these. Hopefully yeah. you're doing these. So for triceps, we have dips, great compound exercise for the triceps, another great compound.